Good evening, class. I had to record class on tonight due to the fact that I've been called to a funeral at seven o'clock. But I wanted to make sure that you all got the information that you all needed. So we're going to jump right in and we're going to start with today's lesson. What I want to talk to you all tonight about are having the strategies for first rate reading. And you have to understand that in order to observe the text, you have to be good readers. So we're gonna talk about reading thoughtfully, reading repeatedly, reading patiently, reading selectively, reading prayerfully, reading imaginatively, reading meditatively, reading purposefully, reading acquisitively, and reading telescopically. When we're talking about reading the Bible thoughtfully, we must read the Bible to understand it. And we have to understand that the Bible does not yield its fruit to those who are lazy. Being thoughtful while you read the biblical text involves focus, and with focus comes study. When you come to the Bible, you must put on your thinking caps. Don't just simply throw your minds in neutral. And I know it's easy to do that, but we have to focus and we have to do our best to be attentive to what the Bible is saying. And we have to use the same mental discipline that we would use in any subject that we take a vital interest to. The very truth of God is found in the pages of scripture. We have to understand that. And please know that these truths from God are able to transform your life. You have to penetrate the surface with more than just a surface reading of the text. You have to think. Let's move on. Read repeatedly. Read scripture over and over again, not just once, not just twice, but hundreds of times if necessary. We do this so that we gain insight on what God is trying to reveal to us. We repeatedly see the genius of the word of God is that it has staying power. It can stand up to repeated exposure. In fact, that is why it is unlike any other book. You may have been an expert in a given field. So if you read a book in that field two or three times, You've got it. You can put it on the shelf and move on to something else. But that is never, ever, ever true about the Bible. Read it over and over again, and you'll see things that you've never seen before. Do this. Try to read a, a book, a, an entire book in one sitting. Start from the beginning of the book and read your way through it. Listen to someone else read the Bible. And you can find that on Bible Gateway. Read the Bible out loud. That's a good way to engage your senses as you strive to become better. Set up a schedule for reading the Bible. Read patiently. Be patient with the text. Be patient with yourself. There's no need for us to rush when we're reading the Bible. So beloved, take your time and remember that this is a marathon, not a sprint. And feel free to reread the biblical text if necessary. Next, we're gonna move to read selectively. Along with your observation questions that I've given you, and you'll have more observation questions in your work on tonight because I added a couple more. But we ask the questions, who, what, where, when, why, how, and wherefore. And you ask yourself, what difference will it make if I apply this truth? So beloved, read selectively. Not only read selectively, but read prayerfully. Reading the Bible and praying simply go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. And also, don't try to imitate other Christians when you pray. Simply pray like you. 
pray the scriptures. Pray the Psalms. These are prayerful Bible studies. Next, we're going to move to read the Bible imaginatively. And I want you to think for a moment. In your own words, what does it mean to read using your imagination? Now, if you need to pause the video right here and write something down, do so. And then come back. But check this out. It is a sad truth that the average person thinks that reading the Bible is dreadfully boring. But my question is, do you feel that way? In fact, some people say the only thing more boring will be listening to someone teach from the Bible. Do you believe that? Yet I'm thoroughly convinced that the reason scripture seems boring to many people is that they come to it with a boring spirit. How different things would be if we employ six strategies for first-rate Bible reading. Use different translations and paraphrases. Rewrite the text in your own paraphrase. Read scripture in a different language if you can. Have someone read the text out loud to you. Change the setting in which you read. Next, we're going to move to read meditatively. And I really want to encourage you to learn to reflect on the word of God. I'm going to highlight that here. Learn to reflect on the word of God. We live in a society where we want things yesterday and we want it designed the way we want it to be designed. As a result of this, meditative Bible reading has fallen out of favor with many people, even in the church. Beloved, there's an old hymn that states, it takes time to be holy. But this hymn is not sung much anymore. And we can understand why. Because time is exactly, is exactly what it takes to become holy. And we cannot become holy in a hurry. And yet we live in a society where we want things yesterday and we want it our way. We live in an instant society and a distracted society. We've got so much coming at us from our TVs, our cell phones, emails, all the social media platforms that we barely have time to react or reflect. That is why scripture speaks so frequently about meditation. Understand these three principles. Time is exactly what it takes to become holy. And we cannot become holy in a hurry. This is why meditation and reflection are needed. Next, we're going to talk about reading purposefully and overview. Purposeful reading looks for the aim of the author. That's why we're here. We want to understand what the author's original intent was when he wrote. Understand that there is not a verse of scripture that was penned by accident. Every word of scripture contributes meaning. I'm going to say that one more time. Every word of scripture contributes meaning. Your challenge as a Bible reader is to discern that meaning. Not what people think it means today, but what the author's original intent was. How do you do that? One of the keys to determining purpose is to look for structure. Every book of the Bible has both grammatical and literary structure. Grammatical structure, verbs, subjects and objects, modifiers, prepositional phrases, connectives. Those are the grammatical structures we want to look for as we observe the biblical text. Then there's literary structure. There's biographical structure, geographical structure, historical structure chronological structure, and ideological structure. Detecting structure, beloved, is a critical step in the Bible study process. When we get to interpretation, we're going to ask, what does this text mean? 
but we will never be able to answer that question accurately until we've answered observational question, what do I see? Structure is the doorway to understanding an author's purpose. The books of the Bible are filled with statements that express the purpose of the writers. An observant reader, beloved, can usually find them. Reading acquisitively. This means we not only read it, but we retain it. Not merely to perceive it, but to possess it. Beloved, take hold of the biblical text and make it your own property. I know you're asking yourself, Dr. Mosley, how can this happen? The key is personal, but active involvement in the process. I'm gonna say that one more time. The key is personal, but active involvement in the Bible study process. You must be engaged and actively involved. There's no proverb to that effect. I hear, I forget. I see, I remember, I do, and I understand. Note that we remember only 10% of what we hear, 50% of what we see and hear, and 90% of what we see, hear, and do. So it behooves us to see, to hear, and to do. Reading telescopically. Telescopic reading means viewing all parts in light of the whole. The Bible is an integrated message in which the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. What happens in a lot of Bible study is that in teaching is that we keep breaking it down and breaking it down until we have nothing but a basket of fragments. What we need today are people who can put the parts back together again into a meaningful and powerful whole. So every time we read scripture and analyze it, every time we take it apart, realize that we've only done part of our task. We must put it back together again. How do we do that? We look for connectives. We pay attention to context. We evaluate the passage in light of the, the book as a whole. We look for historical context of the book. So here, we move to record, and we're almost done. Write notes. Write down what you see in the text. Keep a record of insights and questions. You cannot build on something you do not have. You must remember that. Start where you are, even with elementary things. Everyone starts at the same place. I want us to understand that. But make sure you write what you read down. This will help you to know it better and to have a resource you can go back to when you need a reference. Use something to record what you see, a notebook, your phones, anything that you have that you can use. In your own words, once you have read the biblical text, summarize what you see in the Bible. So later, these thoughts will come back to you and you will have a reference. I said that before. Doing this will help you remember what you've discovered. And lastly, reflect. Take some time and think about what you have seen in the text. Ask yourself, what is going on in the passage? What is the passage telling me about God? What is the passage telling me about myself? What do I need to do on the basis of what I am reading here? Reflection or meditation is vital to understanding God's word. I want you all to go through this information along with the information that you have in your books. And I'm going to send with you an assignment 
that's going to help you engage the text more. I'm sorry about tonight, but like I said, I got a call on yesterday about a funeral, but I wanted to be thorough and make sure that we had a class. So I went ahead and recorded the information prior to the funeral. So if you got any questions, any concerns or any anxieties, feel free to give me a call on Monday. God bless you all. And you have a great night. Remember, read, record and reflect. God bless you.